Welcome to tutorial number one in the self-portrait process journal. So the first step is facial features practice. So facial features are tough to master. There's always things that can be improved on. Um, but I really want you to focus on the shapes and, and the little tiny highlights and details. Shape is most important. And I will probably say this to you quite a few times throughout these videos, but um, shape is really important here. Um, I am going to do uh, a 13 minutes of facial features drawings right after this, um, I, this quick lecture is over. So I'm not going to go too much into detail on any of these. These are more there for you to come back to later. So you want to make sure that you know where the presentation for this unit is so that you can come back to this and use it while you're doing your drawing. So these are cheat sheets meant for you. Usually if we're in the classroom, I will give you a handbook that has these cheat sheets that you can look through at any time or I have, you know, sh sheets floating around the classroom to use. So that's what these are. So these are kind of the um, the suggestions on how to draw different things. Eyebrows, eyelashes, eyes. Uh, here I have examples of a nose and a mouth. Um, I have a few different options for hair because we have all, obviously all, I've seen all different kinds of hair types since I've started this project and just added on all of these great resources as we get, as we go. So here for you, this curl one is awesome. Um, these are some examples of how you could draw wavy or curly hair. And then braided hair. Some examples here of how you might draw it if yours was more of like a twist and less of a braid and then these are like actual braids here um, and then here's some examples of what you could do to make your hair I love this one in the center here it's so detailed but yet so simple all you all they have in there is like a gray a black and uh, a white basically except for it's not white because it's the, the background is brown but you know what I'm saying <laughs> um, Okay, and then here's my examples from the videos. So um, I'm going to show you me drawing here in just a moment. I'd like to go over what this activity, um, what you should do to complete this activity. So you're going to finish watching this video and uh, watch me doing the demonstrations of, of how to draw each thing and I'll talk you through each thing. We would be doing the same thing if we were in class. I would stand at the front of the room usually and do demos and show everybody and talk them through my thinking process. Um, and then after you watch that, it's your turn to practice in your sketchbook. So you'll need two of, of all of these in your sketchbook. I didn't do an ear in the drawing, that's my bad. I totally forgot about the ears, So, but I do want you to practice drawing your, um, your ears. So um, we'll do two eyes, so that's two eyes total, not four, so, uh, four eyes. Um, not two sets, but just two eyes, uh, two noses, two mouths, two eyebrows, same thing with the eyebrows, just two straight up eyebrows, um, and two ears, and then just try to practice a little bit of your hair texture, um, kind of like I did on my sheet. Um, and when you finish these, be sure to practice anything that you're uncomfortable with. So say you did two noses and you feel like they both kind of are not that great. Try to see if you can maybe just do one more, you know, just for your sake. These these really won't take you that long. You all have been practicing doing drawings from the last one. You did a still life. So you're catching on to how to use shape to your advantage. Um, and at the end of this, make sure that you react in your evidence journal in the reflection section before moving on to the second tutorial um, about what challenged you, what surprised you, and if you're ready to start doing your own self-portrait. And be sure to upload um, the photos of all of these uh, to your process journal. So let's go over to the um, uh, the video of me demonstrating how to draw eyes, nose, and mouth. So we're first going to start with an eye. So the first thing that you want to do is, and this is the same within all drawings that you do, is get the overall shape in first. So you're going to do sort of like a an almond shaped, but a little more pointy on one side, and then round it off a little bit on the other. 
and I'll tell you a little bit more about eyeballs as we go here. So let's get the lower and upper lids on and then you want to get the center pupil part of it ready to go. Mine is not perfectly shaped here. This is just quick practice. I wish I would have rounded it out more on the bottom now that I'm looking at it. Now I'm going to darken up the corner of the eye there and our uh, center dark part, the black part, I'm going to darken that up and I'm going to pick out where the highlight hits on the eyeball. That makes it look three-dimensional. And As I said before, I'm going to educate you on eyes. They are literally balls in our heads, so think about that. They're a sphere, okay? They're not, they're not flat, so you're not going to be drawing this and having just white in the background of the eye. Um, you're going to start to really make this look shapely like a sphere, just like when you drew your sphere, your shaded sphere in the last process journal assignment. So this is the same basic thing. So I'm going in and darkening up the outside of the eye and then I'm going to go in with some shading and uh, really start to round out the eyeball itself. I shade a little bit on both sides. Sometimes the light might be hitting from a different angle and that's fine too. And we're going to use our tortillions, which are those white rolled up paper sticks that you have in your bags. Um, I'm going to end up using that. I'm, I love using these ebony drawing pencils because they work so well. The colors or the, the, um, the way it goes on there is so rich. Um, I like to just darken up lines, and which is what I'm doing now. And I'm going to add some eyelashes. So the goal is, again, since these are eyeballs around, we're going to just do little hand ticks, quick, quick motions uh, to get the eyelashes on here. And these, eye, these eyelashes are extraordinary, okay? These, you, your eyelashes, you do not have to have this many. I just put a lot on this person because I wanted them to be glamorous and I wanted to also really emphasize how to do an eyelash. So some people don't have big eyelashes. That's fine too. Be gentle with it. Um, you can layer over it a little bit if you need to, especially for somebody who's wearing mascara. It's good to go over a second time just to kind of show that part. And you'll see I'm just doing quick flicks of my wrist and you can't see it too well on the other side till now, but I'm doing the same thing and you round it one way. So it, on one corner it faces out the left and then in the center it faces in the center and then when you go to the right you'll see me go over it again, it faces to the right. So you've got to find your center and then go out from there and then start shading. I made it a little bit darker on the top lid there and here I go blending it all together. And the blending it is really where it starts to make it stand out. So if you are... Um, using a different technique in your final drawing other than a pencil. If you're using a colored pencil, for example, your blending is going to start when you go back in with a white colored pencil and start to highlight things and blend things together and, and make shading there. So that's the nice thing about pencil drawing is there's just really one step and you can shade it all out nicely and, and get a good look very quick with the pencil. So there is my eye oh no wait i'm doing more yes that's right i go over it again because i didn't like how it smudged over it um so i went back over it just so i could make my glamorous eyelashes stick out a little bit more and there's my eye so next we're going to do a nose oh i'm sorry uh eyebrows this is what i get for doing a voiceover late at night so you're going to just again do those same little small flicks of the wrist and you don't have to go as fast as me. You can go as slow as you need to and find the shape. You could even like lightly pencil in the shape. Just don't keep it there um, because you don't want to see any sort of lines. You want it to look organic. I put those lines there to show you where about your eyebrows should start and end if you're doing your face. Now we're going to move to a nose. So again, basic shapes. Start out here and then add the shape on the bottom and then the two sides coming out. And I hit right up against that paper there. I just That's just how it worked. Didn't give myself enough room. That's okay. We're going to darken the sides 
and then start to come in a little bit and blend and then start using your eraser to subtract things. And I had a lot of messy lines on here that I first went in with. I'm going to end up fixing those later, which you will see. The goal here is just to get rid of your guiding lines at this point and use your tortillion a lot on your nose. So you don't need too dark of dark things on your, your nose except for this next part that I'm doing. You definitely want these parts to be dark because those are the darkest parts on a nose usually. All right, and there's the nose, the basic shape of it. And now we've just got to do some shading. We've got to make it look like it's 3D now. So we've got the contour of it and the shape. And now we're adding in some of the quick tortillion it's so easy with the tortillion, I just love it. How easy it is to get that quick looking value pop out. So eraser's great here too. You'll see me use kind of the side of my pencil just to get a quick, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of put it on its side and just quickly go um, on the side of the nose. And I, I think that works really well. That right here. So flipping it sideways and then you're not going as dark. You're just using the side of the pencil and getting some of that nice quick gray, mid-tone gray. It's not quite the darkest dark. It's just enough to sort of make your nose pop out and it's really good to use tortillion with. I'm gonna darken up the nostrils a little. Yours will be different shaped depending. Uh, this is just a made up nose. This is not my nose. This is just a completely made up random nose right now just to show you how to do a nose. All right, and then I just kind of blended it all in. I was gonna start a face there, but then I realized I didn't have room for the lips. So here is my nose. Next, we're gonna do the lips. So you'll start with the middle line, it's the darkest part on the lips. You'll have a, some points that you can go with, just put little dots where they are. And then you're going to want to do the shape of the top, the line through the center to show you where the center is. And then you can do your lines down at the top lip. The bottom lip is always going to come out more and be a little bit bigger than the, the top lip. And the bottom lip always has the highlight because it sticks out more on our faces than our top lip does. So like the top lip will have like a highlight on the top of it, whereas the bottom lip has highlight kind of in the center of it and then in other spots of it too because more light is hitting your bottom lip. For me, not a lot because I have small lips. This is not my lip. This is just a random lip that I'm drawing. Um, but for some of you... Um, you, this For the size of your lips, you may have a really quite large highlight on your lip, which is awesome. And it creates so much drama and makes it look so much more like 3D. So those of you who have big lips, don't look at it as a curse. Look at it as a beautiful thing to draw. My lips are so thin, they're hard to draw because there isn't as much. <laughs> they're more flat in real life, too. But this person's lips that I'm drawing are quite full. Maybe too full. Maybe on the top I went a little bit too high. Now that I'm critiquing myself here. And this is what a critique is. I'm not being mean to me. So now I'm going through and I've got those highlights. And remember I said to just leave a, a little spot on the top of the top lip. We'll fill that in later. But I left a, a big spot on the bottom lip where there's quite a lot of highlight. And then I'm blending everything in, finding out where the light hit it, hits the lip. The eraser is going to be necessary here to create some highlights on the lip. And the tortillion is definitely going to be necessary too. Lips are actually pretty uncomplicated if you think about them as, you know, being 3D objects. Even though they're pretty flat on our bodies, they are still 3D objects and you should treat them as such. So let it pop out, do a 
the shading around it come I think I come in and do a little more highlight here I'm gonna do highlight at the top because that's where the, the light will hit the lip the most is at the top right above the actual lip and I maybe went a little bit too dramatic with that too just to show you it but when you're blending it into the face it will make it look nice then just do a light or a, a, I'm sorry a darker um, shade at the bottom lip and this maybe was a too dramatic for me too here but we'll, we'll roll with it um, you, don't, you don't have to be that dark with your bottom lip shade. I just went with it and started shading it in. But it helps it to stand out when you've got a lot of that highlight because the lip's technically coming over um, your skin there. So it would, it would be darker there. Um, and then I just come back in and I add a few more lines because we can see lines on people's lips. But I don't go too dark and too much and I kind of shape it just like you do with the eyelashes. So I go, I start facing one way and then when I hit the middle I face the other way. And then I'll add some dark darks here. And then I felt like the shape was weird, I attempted to fix it. You know, I know what I did wrong, it's okay now. But I fixed it and I made it look a little bit more uh, 3D there, I suppose. And this is the basics of uh, facial features here for you. Oh, I forget about the hair. Silly me, here I go. Same thing, I'm just gonna show you a strand of hair. Hair is actually easier than people make it to be. It's just about layering. So I did that first layer and then I'm gonna blend everything and leave the highlight spot right in the center. That's where your the sun would hit your hair the most. Then I go back in, do a few more darks here. Darken stuff up a bit more, create more strands of hair. And again, hair is really all about layering. So just using all kinds of different values in thin strands or if your hair is curly or textured in some way. Um, again, it's still about the layers of what you put in and finding your highlights. So that middle part is my highlight. And I use my, uh, my eraser quite a lot. I like those shaped erasers that have the sharper corners on them with hair if you can get them. Pencil erasers work really well too, just the end of a pencil because you can kind of angle it and get that narrow way. 